My name is Kimberly Wilson, and I am the founder and CEO of HUDE. HUDE is a healthcare engagement solution tailored to address the needs of Black and Latinx populations. I was diagnosed with uterine fibroids in 2017. And while common for women, for Black women specifically, up to 90% will develop them by the age of 50. And for many, they'll never experience any issues. But if you're like me, who had over 30 of them, they began to impact my other organs. Over a period of six months, I lived in New York City at the time, I visited four different white male providers who either dismissed my pain altogether or stated that a hysterectomy was my only option. And it wasn't until finding a black physician in Baltimore over 200 miles away from home that I received the culturally competent care that I needed and deserved. And my story is just the same as countless others, though many are unequipped to be their own self-advocate. In fact, Black and Latino patients are 30 to 40 percent more likely to experience poor health outcomes than white Americans every year. And after being traumatized by my experience, I developed a solution that not only reduces the economic toll for payers, but also drastically improves health outcomes for people of color by reducing barriers that these communities face due to fear, distrust, comfortability, and lack of access to quality care. So Hewitt is initially tackling this problem by allowing patients to use our platform to search nearby Black and Latinx healthcare providers using our data-driven technology that matches patients' needs based on insurance provider, region, specialty, among um, ethnicity and language spoken. We also provide digitally accessible self-mastery tools, wellness workshops, and we connect patients to teletherapy. And with African Americans and Latinos accounting for 95 million people in the United States, the demographic is also the growing majority, making up one in four of the population. And this accounts for $950 billion in annual medical costs. So our business model is based off of three customer segments. The first is a subscription where providers pay a monthly cost to access huge patients, among other benefits a certification program that trains physicians on cultural competency and confronts racial and ethnic disparities in patient care. And lastly, working with employer-sponsored programs to create behavioral changes in how patients seek care by providing motivation and rewards. And we just believe that our technology could be a coach to support lasting behavioral change within these communities. And we hope to disrupt the $385 billion digital health market. So we've already generated some traction through partners such as Unilever, which is actually our flagship partnership, um, among other partnerships with the National Medical Association and the National Hispanic Medical Association. Not to mention, we recently received non-dilutive funding from Google, um, from Facebook, and also most recently, Johnson & Johnson Innovation. In terms of numbers, so we currently have over 8,000 patients or users who engage with the platform, over 400 physicians who are on board and within our network and on the platform, and we're generating approximately $10,000 in monthly recurring revenue. Um, my background, I've spent over a decade understanding and advocating for the needs of people of color through leadership roles at the NAACP, Essence, Color of Change, Univision and more, so I'm deeply committed to the work, not to mention I'm a former adjunct professor at NYU, Howard University, Iona College, um, and the College of New Rochelle in New York. But our founding team is also comprised of tech industry veterans, physicians, clinicians, and more. We're currently raising a million dollars in Q1, um, to oh, closing in Q1 2021. And we would love to just talk with any of you who would be interested in helping us scale our business to the next level. And with that, I just thank you all so much for your time, and I welcome this opportunity for additional questions. Thank you, Kimberly. It's great to see the gap that you are addressing. Uh, we're going to open the floor to the judges, so please go ahead and turn on your mics and cameras. And Kimberly, Hi, Kimberly. Any other questions? I was just uh, thank you for the presentation. I was going to ask you to maybe speak to. Uh, your awareness uh, strategy, how, how, how are you going to break through the clutter of different types of uh, potential platforms offering, uh, maybe not exactly what you're offering, but, you know, a portion of it? 
Absolutely. Um, and thank you for that question. It's one that we actually get very often in thinking about value proposition because we recognize that there are platforms such as Patient Fusion or ZocDoc um, that allow patients to be able to search based off of filters um, that you're mentioning. So in the region, um, none of these platforms allow you to search based off of ethnicity or language spoken. And quite frankly, um, you know, that is just one piece of how we're looking at our company. And we look at it as a three-tiered approach to decreasing disparities within the healthcare system. So the first is the algorithm matching tool that I mentioned that we currently use and patients are currently engaged with it. But when we think about building any healthcare technology and we think about the social determinants of health and the American Medical Association just released a new report talking about racism as a public health threat um, in, in thinking about social determinants of health. We recognize that one, it's unrealistic to think that every patient of color in their lifetime will even be matched with every physician of color. Um, so we're not focused, we're focused initially on that 13%, 6% uh, of physicians identify as African-American, 7% identify as Latino, Latinx. We're focused on the 87% because ultimately we're trying to create be behavioral changes within the healthcare system. Um, we know that, unconscious bias and racism, it, it is systemic in why patients of color do not seek out care. Um, so the next phase in our product roadmap of feud is actually um, developing a curriculum and cultural competency certifications, which we've already started doing through our partnership with Unilever. I know we're coming up at time, so I, I wanna dig deeper into what that partnership looks like. There was a study that came out last year that found that 47% of dermatologists said that if a black patient came into their office, they would not know how to adequately treat their skin condition. That is problematic because African-Americans have the highest mortality rates for melanoma, which is a form of skin cancer. And the reason for that is because it often goes misdiagnosed and undetected. And that's because in medical school, students learn that melanoma appears as a red rash on the skin but textbooks only show white skin. There's a huge education issue that exists. And through our cultural competency and cultural sensitivity trainings, we have been working in partnership with Unilever on training physicians on skin health and skin problems on the different complexions and range of um, skin tones of patients of color. So doing that at scale, looking at ADHD, looking at the issue between the Latinx and immigrant community and why they don't seek out care because of fear um, and going to hospitals. So uh, we're segmenting different specialties based off of this curriculum and these certifications, which is the which is not what any of our competitors are also doing.